Welcome back to Crystal Clear the Roundtable. I'm Ostrich Vox, and is someone going to die in Steve Universe? Like, real soon. As we discussed a few times throughout the week on this channel, Rebecca Sherry went to two separate conventions, Comic-Con Experience and Argentina Comic-Con, both of which she had her own Q&A panels, and an additional Q&A stream, but unfortunately for us English speakers, it was dubbed over in Spanish so you can barely hear what Sugar herself is saying. And while a lot of interesting questions arose from the panel in Q&A, such as teases of White Pearl and almost accidental spoilers of Pink Diamond's fate, there is one question and answer in particular that really stuck out to me. During the first panel at Comic-Con Experience, Sugar was questioned what was the most difficult thing to do as a creator of Steve Universe. To which she replied with, it's coming soon. You'll see it very soon. Now, there's only so many things a creator can do as the hardest thing of their own story, but one that immediately comes to mind, for me at least, is the death of a character. Or at the very least, putting a character out of commission for quite a bit of time. Why do I think this? Well, the characters are always going to be the most important part of a story. As long as you have good characters, you can pretty much put them in any kind of story, have them do pretty much anything. The characters aren't just plot devices, they're children to the creator. And the hardest thing to do as a parent is letting go of your child, finally saying goodbye. Now let's play a fun little game I like to call, who's it gonna be? Who would die, or at the very least, find themselves in a situation on the level of death? But maybe, just maybe, they'll have a chance to come back. Well, I've narrowed it down to three candidates. The first two are Yellow or Blue Diamond. Now, we have no idea what's going through White Diamond's head right now. All we know is that she seems to be relieved and kind of happy that Pink Diamond has returned to Homeworld. And Yellow and Blue have seemed to step up in terms of not being total jerks. Although, as we saw in the latest trailers, they still have their moments. Ugh. But they care about pink just as much as white, and they seem to be very cautious, very weary. Could you imagine how devastating it would be if one of the diamonds got written out of the show? As soon as they're finally beginning to understand Steven, understand why Pink Diamond loved the Earth and believed in the Crystal Gem so much? Now, why do I believe this is likely? Well, despite their spare screen time, it feels as if both Yellow and Blue Diamond's arcs are coming to an end. Or at the very least, coming full circle. When Yellow Diamond was introduced, she was this ruthless, cold, calculated antagonist. All she wanted was for the Earth to be destroyed. She wanted the cluster, and she wanted to take out her anger for losing Pink. She was someone who didn't want to open up. She wanted to block out any and all emotion that could be blocked out as weak. But look at her now. One for starters, I don't think she wants a cluster anymore. As we all saw, it pretty much gave her the beating of a lifetime. And I don't believe she still has a hate boner for the planet Earth. She doesn't seem as angry anymore. While her temper is definitely still there, compare her mannerisms and behavior in episodes such as message received in the trial to how she behaves throughout lecture to homeworld. She is finally opening up, talking about her emotions, starting to not see everything as black and white. We even see her and Steven consulting in the trailer. If Steven can come to Yellow Diamond for advice, then she's definitely grown as a character, even in such a short amount of time. And as for Blue Diamond, in both her flashback and proper introduction, we also see growth to how she behaves now. In the answer, her knee-jerk reaction to seeing a cross gem fusion was to shatter Ruby. How dare anyone fuse with a member of her court, and for all we know, Sapphire wasn't that far off. It definitely illustrated that Blue Diamond can be a loose cannon. Just as bad, if not worse, than Yellow. And when we get our present day proper introduction in the episode Steven's Dream, she is amazingly down in the dumps. She lets anything and everything affect her. It got to the point where she couldn't even be that much of an efficient diamond because she was too grief stricken to properly function. But now look at her. She's definitely been acting a lot happier than she has been in the last 5,000 years, which is a no brainer. She thought Pink Diamond was dead and she's sort of alive through Steven. At the very least, she didn't chatter herself. Rose Quartz was persona and at the very least, we can gather the diamond see that. That much. This has also resulted in a slight change in cadence, the way her voice actress Lisa Hannigan portrays her, but as we see in the latest promos, she's not trying to actively shatter Garden anymore. In fact, she finds it adorable that a ruby and sapphire fusion would identify as a garnet. And while that's very demeaning, it's absolutely not cool at all. It shows that maybe, just maybe, Blue Diamond can learn more about garnet and cross gem fusion. Why garnet wants to be, well, garnet. And I think once she gets a handle on cross gem fusions, maybe even going as far as indulging in it herself, then her arc may come full circle. I still think it's gonna take a while for the diamonds to see the value in humanity. After all, they view them as pets. They still have an entire zoo that needs to be abolished. Not to mention, it took Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl a while to get there too, but both of their core issues, while I still have a lot to work on beyond those, those key points seem to be wrapping up. Not to mention, I would imagine the diamonds are a bit more expensive than the other voice actresses. 
So it's not out of the realm of possibility that, especially with how much you're appearing in these upcoming episodes, something could happen and now we're down one diamond once again. But then again, even I agree that's not totally feasible. The diamonds feel like they still have a big role to play after this arc, and it'd be hard to wrap them up so quickly after building them up for so long. Yet, you never know, so I wanted to put the possibility out there. However, that takes me to my third and final candidate, my favorite character, <sighs> Lars. Regardless of how you feel about Lars, potentially killing him off, or his character being injured, damaged in some sort of way where it almost feels impossible for him to recover, putting him out of commission for a very long time would absolutely be the hardest thing Sugar would ever have to do as a creator. Not even as a creator of CV Universe, but a creator of her old college doodles, her old art, her journey as an artist. Lars has been a part of Rebecca Sugar for years. He transcends Steven Universe as a concept. Him and Sadie have always existed. And when we look at Lars in the show, his arc has definitely been about selfishness. Lars is a naturally selfish person. Even after being resurrected, he's definitely gotten a lot better, and I think being in space with the off-color to something a ton, there's nothing writers love more than tragedy. And the tragedy of something happening to him before he gets to go home, reunite with his parents and Sadie, it's heartbreaking for sure. I have no doubt Lars will be in these upcoming episodes. I showed you the Diamond Days playlist. It's inevitable. But going off of what I said about White Diamond being so obsessed with Pink Diamond, wanting to shelter Pink from any possible bad influence, if Lars does pull up to Homeworld trying to rescue Steven, setting Steven back to Earth through his head, White's not going to be pleased. It's like catching a teenage boy trying to sneak out your daughter. And there would be absolute consequence. This mission to Homeworld and everything that happens will not end peacefully, it's just writing 101. But in order to feel some actual weight, a sense of uneasiness, Lars sacrificing all of his progress to return home to go back to Steven, returning to Homeworld, the place they gave it their all to escape from, is already huge for his character arc. But if push comes to shove and things go awry, I think Lars would put himself front and center, taking any possible damage and punishment from White Diamond. Who knows how his DNA works ever since Steven resurrected him, and who knows how far White Diamond's mental manipulation goes. So perhaps we could even see a White Lars instead of a Pink Lars. It would also add more parallels between Steven and his mother. If White Pearl is the original Pink Pearl, then Pink had this friend, someone that I imagine she would have really admired, but White Diamond took them away from her. Transforming Pink Pearl into this emotionless, colorless robot. If that exact same thing happened to Steven, not only would history be repeating itself, but I imagine the audience would lose their minds. And it would be in this ambiguous area where, debatably, this is a fate worse than death, a fate we don't even know if we can cure. But on the other hand, it paves the way for White Diamond's control to be cured. Lars is clearly Rebecca Sugar's favorite character, and she definitely wants the audience to care about him as much as she does. And what better way to do that than to kill him off, resurrect him, turn him into a space pirate, then essentially kill him off again? in a way where it could be reversed. But if White Pearl has been this way for thousands of years, then Steven may have to just wave the white flag on this, no pun intended, and start looking for new friends. Okay, that was really dark. <laughs> but as always, these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. Will a character get shattered or killed off, or face the wrath of White Diamond ending up as an emotionless, almost robot-like creature? Or is no one going to die at all and the hardest thing something else completely? Seriously, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tune to us at Round 2 of Vids. And for more of my hot takes, you can follow me at Ostrich Vox. We're also on Instagram. If you want to help the Roundtable grow, you can either become a member of the channel or support us on Patreon. Get access to exclusive perks. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please sure to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications to stay in the loop with all things Steven. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Ostrich Vox, out. Hi, I'm Ostrich Vox from the Roundtable. Hi guys, I'm Richard Nemo. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, and it's going to be that time of year where everyone wants to spread their Christmas cheer. The holiday season is the most wonderful time of the year. You all heard the song, but unfortunately not everyone out there can afford to have a great Christmas, especially children out there. And here at the Roundtable, we want to help. And for that reason, Roundtable is launching Tune Up for Santa, a 12-hour charity livestream event this Saturday, December 15th, starting at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're raising money for the Toys for Tots charity, which helps give every kid a great Christmas. We're going to stream video games, have weird challenges, the whole nine. And you're all invited. And we want to reach out to all the content creators, all the streamers, YouTubers, artists in the cartoon community to, to get involved and help raise money for this cause. Singing, dancing, 
maybe wrestling. We'll be taking requests from the stream. We'll have music. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff, so please stop by. Donate if you can, but more than anything, we just want to have fun, and we want to raise awareness for this cause. Now, to make sure we can actually donate the money to Toys for Tots as soon as we can, money would have to be donated via Streamland, so like Twitch, Super Chats will be disabled. No, don't get me wrong, you don't have to donate, but you can just come and watch and enjoy the fun with us. Hope to see you all there. Starting at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, come tune up with Santa with us, and Merry Christmas. I hope that we get to see all of you there.